Happy New Year. The Baseball Insiders are here. We've got Yanks go yard Adam Weinrib, who's in a brawl with Trevor Bauer. You don't want to miss it. Stick around. The Baseball Insiders starts right now. Robert Murray, Happy New Year, buddy. Happy New Year, Carm. You're looking good as always, my friend. Fresh haircut for the pod here. I dig it. Fresh haircut for the pod, fresh new attitude, and we have a guest to start today. I'm very excited about He's our friend, Adam Weinrib. He's a hero uh, to me, and he wrote an article uh, for uh, Dodgers Way that was titled, uh, Fan Proposing in Trevor Bauer Dodgers Jersey Has to Be a Prank, uh, which, of course, it was not a prank, and um, our guy at w-a-l-t-a-z 34 uh proposed in his kitchen in a bauer jersey uh, and and then started a twitter account after the fact adam uh first off how are you buddy good to see you i'm good uh thanks for having me hell of a happy new year woke up (laughs) january 1st uh woke up around 11 eastern which is a little bit late for me uh, was sort of rounding into form around noon. And that's when I noticed that Trevor Bauer woke up way earlier than that on the West Coast and started his 2022, a pivotal year for him, uh, with some thoughts directed at me. So it does not get any better than that. Uh, plenty of happiness in my life right now. Let, let me read the tweet because it's really uh, fantastic. What makes it okay for at Adam Weinrib to go out of his way to attack a couple of Dodgers fans for how they chose to get engaged. Their life is none of your business. Having no happiness in your life doesn't make it okay to try to take happiness away from others. So I think this is a a great opportunity to delve into each of our happinesses here. Uh, Adam, first of all, are you happy? I mean, what would you say? I'm absolutely happy. I mean, look, do I have enough time in my day to quote, go out of my way to write an article? Uh, yeah, I mean, it took three to five minutes. Um, I'm paid to write. So, you know, it wasn't really out of my way. It's not like I took a grand detour to get there. Um, we're all just looking for holiday content. I saw somebody proposing in a Trevor Bauer Jersey. I didn't believe it was real. I thought it was a parody of what people are doing to get onto Trevor Bauer's Twitter feed, which if you look has just been people tweeting at him saying, Trevor, you are my son's idol. He got your jersey for Christmas, and he already had your jersey. It's his third Trevor Bauer jersey. Please shout him out. And then Trevor shouts him out. And so I thought the logical progression was somebody proposing in a Trevor Bauer jersey and begging Trevor to retweet it because, I mean, obviously that's a ridiculous thing to do based on the allegations surrounding Trevor Bauer. Nobody would do that unless they just wanted to see how crazy they could you know, behave in order to get a retweet from Trevor. Um, And it turns out not a prank. Look, egg on my face. It's a real guy. That real guy has follows one Twitter account and it's Trevor Bauer. Um, And that's just somebody who I now have in my life. Walt has Z 34 is just one of my guys now. And he's one of my guardian angels for 2022, I guess. Technically you're, you're actually incorrect on the one following because now he's following two Matt Walters. He's following both Trevor Bauer and a uh, Dodger nation. So Matt is expanding, oh. right? Right, right, Bert. You're, you're, you, you, you don't know Matt Walters, but you're, you're now paying attention to Matt Walters. Yeah. I mean, when you follow one person, it's one thing, but when you follow two, that's a whole other thing, Carm. <laughs> like that's, that's next level. But I, I got to ask you, Adam. So I was following this along just like you. And like you, one, you realize this thing is real. And then you write the article, you wake up, you see the tweet from Bauer. What in the world is going through your mind? I am. um, I'm mostly checking my mentions to make sure they're in line. Like, so you, I I first see, I woke up to write an article about uh, Dan Reeves, rest in peace, uh, the Mm -hmm. the NFL coach, trying to cover somebody else, somebody's bases. I wrote about Dan Reeves. And while I'm tweeting that article out, I noticed that I've been mentioned by Trevor Bauer and it's scrolling on my tweet deck and notifications are piling up. And so the first inclination is just to see, um, all right, is this bad? Have I made a mistake? Is Trevor Bauer in the right? Um, is, are, am I, are my mentions full of people being like, you're an idiot, Trevor rules? Because I know Trevor's fans. That The article's about how Trevor has undaunted diehard fans who will shout him out all day and he can retweet them all in a row 
Um, so I'm thinking, you know, did I say anything too mean? And is the internet agreeing that I'm on the wrong side of history here? So I check my mentions and it's not, it isn't. Trevor's mentions are a disaster. Um, every time he tries to, you know, I don't check, I check his Twitter, but I don't check his mentions. So I don't know how people are behaving. I'm not that insane. I'm not just like Trevor Bauer. If he hears this is going to be like, this guy's in my mentions all day. I live rent free in his head because he knows five phrases, but I'm not in your mentions all day. I don't know what's going on in there. Um, but I sort of assumed it was going to be his <laughs> diehard fans uh, coming after me. Um, but it was mostly just people responding reflexively to everything Trevor Bauer says by reminding him of his own allegations. And once I saw that, I was kind of like, all right, I could take a chill pill here. I don't need to stress about this. I just need to check my phone every 1.5 minutes to see the new strain of people that have evolved in Trevor Bauer's mentions, which are like a Petri dish of weirdos. Yeah. Like, so you mentioned like him tweeting this and like, he's got these catchphrases and everything like with all these allegations that he has going on right now, are you surprised that he's kind of remained in the public eye still tweeting and making content? Like I know for me, it's surprising, but like, how about for you? I am I can't let it surprise me anymore just because I know what society we live in, but it is, it's generally shocking. I mean, he's been exiled from major league baseball. You don't hear a peep about, uh, you know, the resolution of his legal proceedings. There was like a chirp right before Christmas where it kind of seemed like there might be a logical end of the road there, but still there's no real timeline for that. I don't think that, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think the Dodgers have any intention of rostering him next year and they're probably trying to get out of the large salary that they do owe him. But I, I go in so many directions where I'm stunned. He's still out there making content. I'm stunned that his fans are so devoted when there's been nothing for months to increase their love for him. Like, I'm not sure what he's done since the allegations surfaced other than simply continuing to exist that would have swayed anyone to his side. But it even had my brain so warped that when I, you know, saw myself getting called out for the article by Trevor, I was like, oh no, I did mention a private citizen in this story. Maybe I'm in the wrong here. And then like three minutes later, I was like, no, it's totally fine. After Trevor Bauer has made a public post out of this man's private life to congratulate him for getting engaged in a Trevor Bauer jersey, it's still fine for me to say, don't you know what Trevor Bauer reportedly did? Like, and even if, I don't know, you know, you you spend your life rooting for him to, for Trevor Bauer to be right. Fine. But it's still a ridiculous decision. I think it's fair to say it is a ridiculous decision to get engaged in a Trevor Bauer Jersey right now. And you know what statement you're making when you do that. Let's read a graph from your, uh, your piece. What do they uh, love about him? Certainly not his pitching in August and September. Bang. Do they, do, do they love the fact that he's continuing to train despite endless allegations against him? They should love that, which is a fair point. Okay, buddy, you're trying to move forward in your life. Or is it something about how they choose to root for anyone the, quote, mainstream media agrees has done something very wrong? So that on the off chance that person is vindicated, they they get to take a victory lap, which gives them more joy than actually accomplishing something in their own lives. Oh, just good, just going at the people, Wine Rib. I, I I like it. <laughs> who are who are looking for any angle to hate the media? Which, by the way, as a member of the media, I sometimes hate the media. So I I get where some of you people are coming from. Uh, on the other hand, if it wasn't for the media, Jerry Sandusky would still be running around. So people who hate the media, just think about the good that we do out there too, you jerks. But l- let me, um, let me just re- let me. I you you talked about living in the mentions. I I love living in mentions. Like the mentions is the best part of this whole thing. How about at Sunshine Emma? Do you know who I'm talking about, Adam? Did you see I her? do, I do, because she was one of the very few people that had me briefly reconsidering, like, uh-oh, is the tide about to turn against me? And then it did not do that. <laughs> she she wrote, there was this was a once-in-a-life moment, Adam Weinrib. Engagements are sacred. I would hope you would reconsider, remove your article, and apologize to that lovely couple. Tre- Trevor Bauer is a public figure, but they are not. At fan side, I consider that you may generate clickbait, but at what cost? And then I, you know, you click on Sunshine, and um, her her bio says she loves Jesus, my husband, and Reds baseball, which I think is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, you know, 
I, I just don't look as at a, at a marriage proposal. At, at maybe I'm just maybe I'm the jerk here. I don't look at that as something that's super sacred. I mean, uh, what's the, what's the divorce rate in this country? And I just I don't know. I don't feel like this was some sacred moment in a kitchen with a jersey on and and and, and asking for marriage. That, that's just me. Call me uh, call me a jerk. I, okay, I got to ask a follow up here, Carm. Are you saying that <laughs> proposals yeah. are not sacred, or like, really in general, or what? I, I, yeah, uh, proposals are not sacred. They're they're it's a nice moment, but let's not let's not let's not climb them up the tree like that. That's like this is like, you know, something where these two people came together for this moment in time that was meant for each other and and we'll always remember it. I mean, sure. People remember where they proposed and what they did. I, I can remember where I proposed and the fact that uh, Chelsea would never come over to my apartment and I forced her to come over and had the ring out. That was adorable. And I'm sure Adam did a beautiful thing and Robert, you'll do your thing one day or whatever. Hunter Armour's got his head, his beautiful moment with Cora. Great. It's not sacred, sacred. Like, what is this? I'm, I'm sorry. It's just too tall for me. Yeah, we'll, we'll agree to disagree on that one, Carm. But I will say this, though. Okay, so uh, I'm going to venture out into a different. Wait, like, wait. Okay. Can we can we pause for that Bert's a ro- romantic? <laughs> Look at he's, he's, a, he's a romance guy out of nowhere. Oh, Go ahead. Yeah, we're a big romance guy over on this oh, part. A big of the romance guy. Okay. Yeah, big I'm romance. a romance guy, too. It's it's not like <laughs> I snuck into the bushes and took a picture through Matt Walters' window. He tweeted it at Trevor Bauer. I didn't, like. <laughs> I didn't corrupt the moment myself, but please carry on. Okay, so I think proposals are sacred, but like if you propose at a baseball stadium or like you do it on the jumbotron, like that's where it loses all sacred like level. It's just you, you, no. Like, he proposed. You do that. He proposed at a baseball jersey. I mean, in I guess it's a, in the kitchen. I mean, yeah, whatever. That's bad. I, that I mean. As a troll. He proposed as a troll. He turned his proposal into a troll of people who hate Trevor Bauer. That's what it was, right? That's a fair, that's another fair way of looking at it. And and I should actually walk myself back. If you want to propose in a baseball jersey and that's the most beautiful thing to you and you guys love baseball in the seventh inning stretch and you lo- you listen to the baseball insiders, you propose in that baseball jersey. And, and if it's sacred to you, that's great. And maybe I just need to up my sacredness or something i don't know i'm not saying uh, i you know i'm not 100 percent dying on the vine that i'm right here that proposals aren't sacred <laughs> but but i mean but come on there sunshine let it, this is we didn't we didn't adam weinrib our guy here he didn't do something that was uh sacrilegious to the world by by writing about a ridiculous proposal in a bauer jersey i'm sorry that did, that's not what happened I really hope that I didn't. I did have somebody had an awful tweet that I will not even read the details of because it's disgusting and it has to do with giving Bauer a pass for this. It it was like an if what Bauer did is true, then it's still no big deal tweet, which is awful and gross. But somebody liked that tweet and their bio said Christian, but not perfect. And I just (laughs) wanted to note that like, yeah, that's the most imperfect form of Christianity I've ever heard of. I mean, I, I like the shots here. Bauer just landed significance to Adam Weinrib. Okay, buddy, you 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 go right at Adam. I'll I'll def, I'll defend him to the end of the earth. You, and then they come at fan side. This would be real. Wait, let me find that exact tweet. Hold on, I put it in my notes here. So it's, it's a good shot at the old fan sided. Um, he's from fan side. It's not a real site. So you walk that back, buddy. This site is as real as any site. You know what happens when you when you go to fansided.com, you click on it and then a site appears. That's as real as ESPN.com, you jerk. <laughs> uh, so I but like I just enjoy the whole mentions of everything. I don't know if you can tweet about what's okay and not okay, bro. Going back at Trevor along with a zillion others. Like, right. Hey dude, you know, your your concept of what's okay and not okay is 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 most definitely in question, Trevor. But we all can sit out there and try to defend ourselves. I don't know. Where do you, where do you think this goes for Trevor? Does anybody have a take on that? I mean, I, I, Adam, I, you're saying that you don't think he plays again. I tend to think that guys get 7 zillion chances and Trevor Bauer will somehow get his get any insight on the baseball insight to that Robert Murray. Yeah. I'll uh, I'm a believer that players that are that talented, they're going to get opportunities somewhere, but I am very, 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 very confident. He will never throw another pitch with the Dodgers again. Um, I mean, obviously the Dodgers can't come out and say that because the allegations are still pending, but I would be absolutely floored if Bauer pitched for the Dodgers again. 
th- this one, it's, 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 it's not nearly the same. And what Antonio Brown did yesterday is like borderline uh, outstanding compared to what Trevor Bauer is alleged to have done. But there is something about the the Brown thing that that's that I'm thinking about, which is the, how we enable people. We enable the people that have talent. We look the other way, and ultimately, it always ends terrible. Um, I, I I'm sure somebody out there is looking at this like I'm sure Trevor has learned from this, and he'll never do it again. And he's still an incredible pitcher, so. We're, we'll give him uh, a chance, even though he's probably a very odd duck in our locker room and is going to be a loner and everything, but whatever. He throws every one out of every five days. This is not basketball. He doesn't have to have chemistry on the field, so to speak. We'll give him another opportunity. Adam, you're, you're both shaking your heads yes. So I, I, I take it you agree? Yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't be shocked at all um, if he came back again. And, and, and again, it's not like these allegations surfacing – was the first time we learned that Trevor Bauer was not like most major leaguers or had opinions that differed from the mainstream. And and there's nothing wrong with having opinions that differ from others, but he had a lot of behavior in his past that was already, uh, you know, significantly red flagged. I'm that's why I'm surprised he only came at me once and not with personal attacks and not with screenshots of my posts from 2014 or whatnot. I guess it's because I'm a man and not a college aged girl but he did decide to stop the attacks on me relatively quickly. Um, But if you remember in the past, there was a female Astros fan who he went at for days and days who, who brought up, uh, you know, just a very innocuous tweet. And he kept sending like screenshots of her tweeting about underage drinking and saying, is this you? And he just sort of harassed, you know, a younger female Twitter user off the platform. So I guess that's the difference between me and, and that person is just, you know, he he's learned his, he's learned, from that experience, not to drag this on for days and days, I guess, in the most optimistic reading, but long before we knew what we know, or we think we know about Trevor Bauer, we knew that he was somebody who stirred up a lot of trouble and got himself into trouble by, you know, following a rope way too far just for the sake of his own gratification. Yeah. And and going along those lines, like if there's teams like even when he was a free agent a couple of years ago, there was a very limited market for him. And it ultimately ended up coming down to the Dodgers and the Mets. Um, and as I said, I don't think the Dodgers are going to be in. Uh, well, actually, I don't think he'll ever pitch for the Dodgers again. I cannot see the Mets who have had their fair share of PR disasters over the last 10 years being in. I, if there's going to be another team that gives him another chance, it's going to be a very limited market. So I'm curious to see what that looks like, but you have to think there's going to be some team that entertains it at least, but man, it's just, I, I just don't know. It's, it's such a, yeah. Well, who is, who's the new England Patriots of baseball? Like I can't, uh, is it the Yankees? I mean, honestly, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, who, who's, who thinks that they can take somebody and make it right. The, I, does that team exist off the top of my head? I, I do you have a better example than that at either of you guys? I yeah, mean, like, I mean, for, like one of the teams that popped into my head was the Dodgers, and mm-hmm. yeah, like I mean, they're not going to give them another chance, I don't think. So, I mean, Yankees, they make sense. How about you, Adam? What do you think? I, the only other thing I think is Houston, but he has such a history with that franchise that, like, I, I mean, Houston did the Roberto Asuna thing. Houston obviously bent, uh, you know bent over many times in the 2017, 18, 19 Jim Crane era, like to ruthlessly win at all costs. I mean, it's not rewriting the record books to say that Houston made some questionable decisions along the way in the name of championships. Um, But again, they're under the microscope now more than ever. So, I mean, I I can't imagine the world where the Houston Astros hope that they can lay low for a little while and bring Trevor Bauer back after all that's attached to the Astros name now. So 2019, I would say so, but there's mutual beef there and the reputation dings that they've already had to weather. I I can't imagine that would happen at any more either. All right, Bert, you got anything else? Because I want to I want to move to something that I think is the key point of this that we're missing. Yeah. Which, uh, oh, all right, oh. cool. So let's go back over the tweet one more time. What makes it okay for Adam Weinrib from Trevor Bauer at Bauer outage to go out of his way to attack a couple of Dodgers fans for how they chose to get engaged. Their life is none of your business. Having no happiness in your life doesn't make it okay to try to take happiness away from others. This just made me think who are the happiest players in baseball? 
Like, give, give me, let's, let's, let's do a, let's do a deep dive for a second here or a shallow dive on who the hell, like when you think happy baseball player or just have, and even further, we can go just happy people in life. I guess we can open it up to, but like, I, I, I made my list of, of, of happy baseball players, but does any, let, let, let's uh, have you guys go first here, Bert, you got anything? So you sent this question to me earlier today and the name that immediately popped into my head was Bartolo Colon. Um, and all of a sudden I went to Google and I searched happiest players in baseball just to like get some other ideas. And I went to images and like the first two or three images were in fact, Bartolo Colon. Like to me, like if you're thinking happy baseball, how can you not think about big sexy? I should have worn my big sexy shirt to this podcast. Cause I got one and I, uh, I wear it with any excuse that I possibly have. Like, that guy was the man. I love Bartolo. It's a great one. I, you know, I covered the White Sox extensively the last three years before last season. And so being in that clubhouse every day, two guys come to mind. Eloy Jimenez might be the happiest dude on the planet. That mm-hmm. dude does not stop smiling for anything. He's a, you know, he's on the field in the dugout before the game, after the game, dude's just straight happy. And another guy who's made his way around baseball, uh, and who ran to home plate on a walk-off and dumped Gatorade on his own head is Yolmer Sanchez, which is a, a you know, fifth infielder or whatever. But, like, Yolmer, every time I went, that dude was, like, the happiest guy going. And they're, those, these people are, you know, they're happy people. You want to be around them. You got, you got some happy Yankees or elsewhere, Adam? I was always thinking uh, about D. Gregorius's Yankees tenure, but he got a little – unhappy towards the end of it and got exiled to Philly. I, I sort of feel like he might come back as a depth piece now that Philly wants to dump him. So we'll see if he's happy when and if he returns. Um, but how about Jazz Chisholm? Just like I, I'm waiting for the Marlins pitching staff to, you know, all lock in together and get that team competitive because I, I, maybe we all missed the 2020 playoff run uh, because there was 2020. We had a lot going on. We didn't have enough time to parse out the validity of the Marlins contention. Um, 2021 was kind of a mess for them, but jazz, man, that guy's smile, that guy's hair, that guy's triples. He's one of my top five favorite players in baseball. And I feel like 2022, uh, if there's baseball is the year when everybody else sort of notices. Yeah. I'm so glad you ended up mentioning this because I totally forgot about jazz. Uh, I was in St. Louis. It was Miami and Cardinals, um, earlier this year. And I was standing by the Marlins dugout before the game and all of a sudden like jazz comes up behind me and like comes up behind me and says, what's up, bro. And like, he goes out in the field, he does this thing, comes over by me afterwards. And we're talking for like five minutes. We're like laughing or, you know, what's off. Um, and like, he's got a smile on his face the entire time. And I gave him a bump afterwards and he walked away and I'm like, Holy crap, this guy legitimately oozes swag. He's got more swag in five minutes than I've had in almost 26 years of life. So God bless you jazz. Like that very impressed, but Another one that I mentioned to Carm, by the way, um, kind of an underrated one is Willie Adamas. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to be around him quite a bit in Milwaukee, um, and that guy is super cool, super nice, always smiling. Uh, Brewers love his energy. So, um, yeah, like that one, he's kind of an underrated one for me. But but Jazz, like, that was, that was very well done, Adam. Good job. Ha- ha- happiness in baseball, by the way, very underrated. 162 games, you're showing up every day. We need, we need good juju in the clubhouse. Uh, and you just teed up, by the way, from happy to unhappy. I try to get Chris Bryant on every pod that we do. KB, as a young dude, I mean, his resting face was just smiling. Guy was, I mean, just so incredibly happy. And then, you know, the Cubs go south and people start cracking on him. And he's just like, what the, you know, get, get me out of here. And, of course, San Francisco just going on to the next, but like, that was a guy that went like happy to unhappy. I, I can think of other Cubs that that happened to like Sammy Sosa was the happiest dude ever. Right. I mean that he sprint out to right field, hold the American flag, hit homers after uh nine 11. I mean, happiest guy ever. And then just, he still actually tries to maintain a positive thing, but I think I'd like, if you put him in the lie detector test, I don't know how, how actually happy Sammy is. Does it, does it, does anybody hit come to mind on the happy to unhappy film? Well, okay. I'll mention what Hunter Armour, one of our producers, said before the show. Barry Bonds, um, he was a very unhappy yeah. guy during his playing career, and like now at post career, as Hunter said, he seems like a very happy dude and loving life. Unhappy to happy. 
Yeah, it's uh, boy, you gotta love that for Barry. I he, that's g- good job by him. But uh, like I know for me, I'm not gonna just I won't mention one specific player, but I got this idea from Adam before the show actually. So credit to him. Is mm-hmm. the current remaining big free agents in baseball, um, and you're looking at Carlos Correa and Trevor Story. Uh, but I'll like I'll actually focus on Story here. Um, he his market is probably the most confusing in baseball. Um, I'm pretty sure he got offered a multi-year deal by the Mariners. Um, and like his market besides that was, was, I don't know how strong it was. And there was a wide assumption, at least publicly, it ended up landing like maybe a six or so year deal for about $150 million. I like, I've mentioned this in previous episodes and like, I'll say it again. I wonder if he ends up having to sign a one-year deal um, to try to like prove it kind of like what Marcus Simeon did with the Blue Jays and then ended up signing seven years for with the Rangers. Um, but we don't know when he's going to be able to sign that contract because there's a lockout and there is no end in sight with it. So if we're going to name unhappy players, I'll say story. I don't know if he's actually unhappy. I, I got to say that, but um, like for me, I, I feel like he'd probably be pretty unhappy. Carlos Gray is going to be damn happy somewhere. It's probably going to be with you, Weinrib, right? No, no chance. I'm, I'm looking at that Trevor one-year deal, and I'm saying, Trevor, come be happy with your buddy, DJ LeMahieu. Rebuild your value on the 2022 wild card game losers. That's what I have to say. Um, I also want to give a special shout-out to the unhappiest man, I assume, uh, Kurt Schilling, who tried to pull himself <laughs> off the Hall of Fame ballot couldn't do it really wanted to couldn't do it and since this is the baseball insiders i will share a tidbit that i've been holding on to since 2009 for only good friend oh i guess 2010 red sox spring training peter gammons told me a college student that kurt Schilling was the only player he'd ever met in baseball history with no friends so there you go <laughs> that's that's wow. a good insight right there oh baby love that adam yeah by the way <laughs> his his answers to these questions like he says them and I'm like I'm automatically like, why did I not think of that? So I'm, I'm praising you a lot on this show, Adam. Uh, I'm, I'm again. locked in. Yeah. I feel like Trevor mentioning me gave me like ESP. I feel like my takes have, have hit another stratosphere. If I can survive going after a, a random couple that I guess I've been energized. I don't know. I, I do feel bad, but it, I didn't start it. Uh, for, for the record, fan proposing in Trevor Bauer Dodgers jersey has to be a prank. If you're listening to this podcast, just give it give it a read. I thought it was an excellent article. I mean, I really enjoyed it. It was, it was a well done, brother. Good it's stuff. Also worth, it's also worth mentioning that the guy commented on the article and said that if I want a debate, I know where to find him because he dropped his Instagram handle, like obviously in the screenshot when he shouted it out to Trevor. And so I checked and he blocked me. So I guess he didn't want to debate at all, which is a shame because I'm, I'm here. He wanted to flex. Uh, before we go, I just my list of happy players, I, I got to get this out there. I got Eloy, who I mentioned. I mentioned KB. I mentioned Sam. I mentioned Yolmer. But just throwing it around at different people, George Springer got a mention. Nick Swisher is somebody that, who I thought of. The, that dude was – he could be on the ha- – unhappy to happy to happy to unhappy to fraud you can put a lot of things for nick swisher uh but he's in there i was thinking of ozzy smith and you can't go out to shortstop and do a flip and not be a happy dude uh adrian beltray got a mention big poppy got a ton of mentions tony gwynn freddie freeman kirby puckett i leave anybody out that uh that's on anyone's tip of the tongue here mr cub ernie was a happy dude uh but also there's a lot of depth there Front facing, Ernie very happy. Behind the scenes, not not necessarily as much. I think I think Ernie took out a lot of water for to uh, you know let's play two and all that for for our old baseball fans out there. I love Ernie Banks. R.I.P. Bird, anybody in in Brewers Land? Not give me a, Brewers Land, but I'll I give I'll give you another one. Uh, Polar Bear Pete Alonzo uh, hmm. with uh, with the Mets. Yeah, that's a very happy dude. Like, not kidding you. Like. I, uh, I'm, I searched him probably a week ago. Cause I just wanted to like read up on Pete Alonzo. Cause what else do I have to do during the lockout? And like, everybody mentioned his happy go lucky nature. And 
Um, it, like it stuck out in my head when you end up texting Matt. So I, I got to give him a shot because he seems like a very positive dude. I would have mentioned Francisco Lindor, by the way, but um, like when he was with Cleveland, but after his year with the Mets, I had to leave him off. I, I somehow off the record, actually on the record, whatever, I, I got a I got a request to Adam Jones, former Oriole, as to who he would put in this category. He gives Kevin Millar and Raul Abanez. And he also said it was a great question. Go Carl. Whoa. Go me. <laughs> well, I think it to like you hear it all the time though. Like the the uh, you know your attitude in the clubhouse there's some there's always like on on winning teams there's some dude that sort of brings everything together because he he loosens it up he he's he's got that 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 juju yes yes oh, i got one baby i got one the quirkiness that loosens up the clubhouse positive dude hunter pence that guy nope. being around him in san francisco in the clubhouse and like that guy, I've never been around another player like that in my life. Like that guy, his quirkiness and his attitude, like, man, oh man. I, it even made me happy. And I was there to do my job, like covering these guys. It, it, so good work, Hunter, if you're listening to this pod. Bert, you're, by the way, top five media person in happiness. You wake up at three, you're ready to go. You're smiling all day long. You're a happy dude. Hey, Unless I appreciate you're... you. The only way to live life, Carm. We're, uh, we're, yeah, well, you bring it out of me though. I'll give you that. No, I don't know. I get zero credit. You just, you, you just right at him. Isn't, isn't, isn't that the Robert Murray that we know? Absolutely. And, and you know, I think you get some credit cause you're, you're drawing it out of him. You're putting the spotlight on him, but yeah, every time I talk to this guy, he's, he's pepping me up and I could look, I put on a brave face, but I could use a pep talk after, you know, <laughs> sifting through a lot of a lot of loud Twitter people and blank Dodgers avatars for 48 hours. So it feels good to, you know, Robert's reports to joy today. Well, hey, for well, there we go. I like that. And for real, any in, in your I maybe it could get a little uh in the weeds over there, Adam, but any attention is good attention in this thing. If they you know you you wrote a very, very, very fair piece that uh if, if people have a problem with it, that's just, that's on them. That's that. If we're talking real talk here, I, I thought it was really well done. And uh, you've got a pace to your writing that I just enjoy. There's a speed to it. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm just, uh, I don't know. I'm like at a party with somebody who's talking fast and is telling me all the things that I need to know in life. So good work, brother. Um, here's the 2022 team. First, first baseball insider pod. Weinreb. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, good to be here. Glad. Thanks to have somebody else defending my good name. Felt good. Um, and I'm glad you say that uh, my writing had speed because in the five hours after the tweet, I kind of felt like I was on speed. My head was reeling a little bit, but it's it's good to hear the good to hear the positive aspect of speed cited here. Uh, so thanks for having me, y'all. Bird, anything it. we should be looking out for this week, next week, uh, in your insider world? Um. More of nothing is basically more of nothing, it. right? Yeah, more it's, of uh, yeah, we're at a snail's pace here with these talks. I don't even think they've started up yet, but I have to imagine it'll start up here in the near future with the CBA negotiations. All right, for those who are checking out the pod for the first time and you made it this far, like, subscribe, hit the YouTube, click that, click that thumbs up button. We love you. We need you. We are you. Thank you. And uh, yes, uh, we will be back next week with another edition adam stay safe out there don't run into trevor bauer i well let's see if he runs back into me i'm not going to do anything let's let's see what trevor decides to do we'll see y'all next time with the baseball insider see you bert see you later carm see you later adam